Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be solving problem 1.8 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. And part A asks us to prove that the two-dimensional rotation matrix in equation 1.29 preserves dot products. So I've rewritten equation 1.29 at the top here. And it's like a matrix formulation based on the x-bar, y-bar, and z-bar system that's been rotated by the angle phi relative to the x, y, z system about a common axis where x is equal to x-bar. And that can be shown in this figure here. So you've got the z and the y-axis orthogonal here, and the z-bar and the y-bar axis also orthogonal but there's an angle phi between the y and the y bar axes and also the z and the z bar axis here. So I'll label this phi as well. Okay, so I think it's just important to show where this matrix comes from. So we'll start by defining some terms based on this vector A. So to start with, we have the y component of it. a sub y is equal to a cos theta. And this z component, a z, is equal to a sine theta. OK. Now we can define the y component of the, well, the y bar component, which is can be written like this. And this is just a cos of theta bar, where theta bar is just this angle here between the y bar axis and the vector a. Okay, and then we can write theta bar as theta minus phi. So we can write this as a cos theta minus phi. And then using the cosine addition slash subtraction formula, we can write this as a times cos theta cos phi plus sine theta sine phi. Okay, and then if we just look at which terms we'd have to factor out to write in terms of a y and a z. If we take out the a cos theta of, of the first term, we, we have cos phi a y from, from this plus sine phi a z from this. Now the next part would be to define the z bar component of a, which we can write like this. And this is equal to a sine theta bar and then in a similar way to before, we can write this as a sine theta minus phi. Then using the sine addition or subtraction formula, we can write this as a times sine theta cos phi minus cos theta sine phi.
and then writing this in terms of ay and az from before we have Well, we can write this, if we take this term first, we have minus a cos theta sine phi, and we can write that as minus sine phi a y. And then we have a sine theta cos phi, and we can write this as plus cos phi a z. So we can see that these two equations for ay bar and az bar can be written using this rotation matrix in equation 1.29. So if we just take one term at a time, we have ay bar equals cos phi ay plus sine phi az using matrix multiplication, and az bar equals minus sine phi ay plus cos phi az which are both exactly what we've derived here. So what the question actually wants us to show is that the dot product is preserved with the rotation matrix. So AY bar, BY bar plus AZ bar, BZ bar is equal to AY, BY plus AZ, BZ. And a simpler way of writing this is that a bar dot B bar, where the A and B are both vectors, is just equal to A dot B. Okay, so I'll just do a short aside on how we can link matrices to the dot product itself. So let's say we have two vectors, v and w. Okay, and we can represent vectors as columns of matrices. So let's imagine that this vector v is v1, v2, and v3 as its components. And the vector W has W1, W2, and W3 as its components. Now, if we remember the definition of something called a transpose of a matrix, and this is just when the columns become the rows and the rows become the columns. So let's calculate the transpose of V times W, where W is just as we've written it here. So this would be the vector V, but as a row vector instead of a column vector because it's been transposed. So we have v1, v2, v3 in a row multiplied by w, which is w1, w2, w3 in a column. And if we just work this out as we usually would multiply matrices, we find that this is equal to v1, w1 plus v2, w2, plus v3, w3, which is actually the definition of the dot product of v and w as vectors. Okay, so now we can use this new definition to try and show that this dot product is preserved under the rotation matrix process. So to start we just need two vectors a and b where a is equal to a y a z 
as before. Two dimensional is the question once. And B is equal to BY, BZ. Now, it's also helpful here to define this rotation matrix just using one letter. Let's say R for rotation. So we can define R as cos phi, sine phi, minus sine phi, cos phi. And with this, we can start to write down the relationships between A and A bar and B and B bar. And this will help us show that this is true. So we can write A bar the matrix with these A y bar and A z bar as components as just the rotation matrix R multiplied by the matrix A. And a similar thing for the matrix B bar. This is just R times the matrix B. Okay, so now we've defined our matrices A bar and B bar in terms of A and B and the rotation matrix. We can start trying to compute the dot products. So the dot product of A bar and B bar, we can use this relation here with the transpose and say that this is the transpose of A bar times B bar. Okay. And then this is the same as writing the transpose of R times A. Times B bar, which is R times B. Now, an important thing to draw attention to here is this aside I've written, where the transpose of the product of two matrices isn't as simple as the transpose of the first matrix times the transpose of the second. The order actually switches. So the transpose of n times n is the transpose of n times the transpose of m. So we can apply that here. So we have the transpose of R times A as the transpose of A times the transpose of R. And then we just multiply this by R times B as normal. So the next step in solving this problem is to write out this product of all four matrices in full. So to start with, we have the transpose of the matrix A. So we just write this as a row vector, as it's been transposed. So this is A, Y, A, Z, followed by the transpose of the matrix R, which is cos phi minus sine phi, sine phi, cos phi. And we just have the matrix R, which we've got up here, cos phi, sine phi, minus sine phi, cos phi. And then finally, just the matrix P, which is BY. BZ.
So the easiest thing to do from here is to deal with the product of the transpose of R and R. So let's write in the first the transpose of A, we can just leave in A Y A Z. And then we know we should get a two by two matrix when multiplying these out. The first term being cos squared phi plus sine squared phi, which we can just write as one. The second term is cos phi sine phi minus sine phi cos phi, which is zero. This third term is sine phi cos phi minus sine phi cos phi, which is zero as well. And then this fourth term is sine squared phi plus cos squared phi, which is one. So this is the identity matrix, the two by two identity matrix. And then we can have by bz as normal. So because this is the identity matrix, it, it leaves things alone, essentially. So, so we have AY, AZ as a row vector times BY, BZ as a column vector, which can be expanded out to give AY, BY, plus a z b z so there we have shown that the dot product of a bar and b bar is a y b y plus a z b z which is exactly the same as the dot product of a and b based on how we define them here So just to summarize what we've shown, we've proved that the dot product of A bar and B bar is equal to AY BY plus AZ BZ, which can also be written as the dot product of A and B. So we've shown that this expression and this expression are equal, which is exactly what part A of the question wants us to show. So even if vectors A and B are acted upon by this rotation matrix, the dot product is unaffected or preserved. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll be solving part B of, of question 1.8 in the next one.